An international team of astronomers has discovered a mysterious ring near the center of the galaxy. This object is only visible in radio waves, and its true nature is not fully understood, although scientists have some suspicions. In 2019, astronomers observing the night sky with the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder ASCA, telescope noticed several strange radio rings, undetectable at any other wavelength of light and without an obvious source. Scientists have named them Mott Radio Circles forks. In the new observations, astronomers using the Meerkat Radio Telescope located in Meerkat National Park in the Northern Cape of South Africa have spotted a new ring that, unlike the others, is located almost at the center of the galaxy. The discovery was described in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics. Only a few of them are currently known, but the newly discovered orc does not fit in with the others. During observations made with Meerkat in November 2022, astronomers led by Cristobal Bordi of the Catania Observatory in Italy noticed something unusual. It was an orc, but not where it should be. All orcs discovered so far have been found high above the plane of the Milky Way. Several orcs contain a galaxy at the center of the ring. Researchers believe that these structures were created by an explosion from that galaxy, perhaps from a starburst event that resulted in multiple supernovae or the merger of two supermassive black holes. But the new orc is only six degrees above the plane of our galaxy. Furthermore, from our perspective, it appears to be quite close to the center. The structure has been catalogued as J1802-3353 and named by its discoverers Kiklos, which means circle in Greek. Kiklos is only visible at radio wavelengths. Similar structures had never been seen before because they were too large faintly visible over such large areas of the sky that they were invisible to telescopes with small fields of view. Kiklos is probably at least several light years across. Kiklos appears in the meerkat images as a faint, nearly circular structure with bright edges, the interior of which is devoid of detectable emissions. Although it resembles an orc, it is located at a much lower galactic latitude than known orcs. What's more, it is also an order of magnitude fainter and has a much flatter spectral index compared to the population of detected orcs. It is not fully understood what orcs are. Astronomers think they may be structures formed by supernovae or galaxy mergers. They may also be associated with jets emitted by supermassive black holes. And while the identity of the orc is unclear, Kiklos seems to be yet another structure. The paper describing the discovery of Kiklos offers a number of possible explanations, but most of them seem to fit poorly with what is seen. The most likely answer is that Kiklosa was formed by the shedding of outer layers by a rare class of star called a Wolfreyat star. Wolfreyat stars are ultramassive stars with characteristic broad emission lines instead of narrow absorption lines which scientists explain by a vast envelope of gas and dust. These are stars at the end of their lives that have used up all their fuel. They spin rapidly, throwing material into space at high speeds, and could explode at any moment. Astronomers have three candidate stars that could have been responsible for the formation of Kiklosa, but at this stage we don't know enough about any of them. Based on the limited data currently available, the morphological and spectral characteristics of Kiklos appear more consistent with the envelope of a wolf rayet star, the authors wrote in the paper. Further observations will be needed to fully characterize Kiklos and identify a possible central source that could confirm the hypothesis of a shed envelope by a wolf rayet star. Scientists have identified a previously unknown region in the Earth's liquid core. Australian scientists have discovered a torus-shaped structure thousands of kilometers beneath our feet, in the Earth's liquid core. 
It is located parallel to the equator and may provide new clues about the dynamics of our planet's magnetic field. The torus-shaped region was discovered by scientists from the Australian National University ANU. They used seismic waves generated by earthquakes to do this. Using a new way of studying these waves, Xiao Long Ma and Hirvoj TK Lai found a large torus-shaped region in the Earth's liquid core parallel to the equator. This region is several hundred kilometers thick. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Science Advances. It is commonly believed that the Earth's core is a sphere with a radius of almost 3,500 kilometers. It is composed mainly of nickel and iron alloys, but may have admixtures of sulfur, silicon, or potassium. Researchers distinguish three structures that make up the Earth's core, the liquid outer core, the inner core, and the transition zone between them, the Lehmann discontinuity. The Earth's inner core rotates freely surrounded by a sea of liquid iron, the outer core. Convection currents occurring in the Earth's core create a geodynamo, thanks to which our planet is surrounded and protected by a magnetic field. Above the core is the Earth's mantle, and only on top of it is the crust of our planet, on which we live. The newly discovered donut-shaped region is located at the top of the Earth's outer core, where the liquid core meets the Earth's mantle. This region lies parallel to the equatorial plane, it is limited to low latitudes. We do not know its exact thickness, but we have concluded that it reaches several hundred kilometers to the border of the core and mantle, said TK Lai. In the study, scientists determined that seismic waves travel through this area about 2% slower than in the rest of the core. They say this means it contains more lighter elements, such as silicon and oxygen, and could play a key role in the convection currents flowing through the core that generate Earth's magnetic field. Scientists use seismic waves produced by earthquakes as a type of ultrasound to map the shape of structures inside the Earth. Most such studies focus on the strong, initial waves that travel across the world in the hour or two after an earthquake. The ANU scientists looked at the later, weaker part of these waves. They analyzed the similarities between the waveforms recorded by different seismic detectors many hours after the earthquake, which led them to make the unique discovery. By understanding the geometry of the wave paths and how they travel through the outer core, we reconstructed their travel times through the Earth, showing that the newly discovered region has low seismic velocities, TK Lai said. This particular structure has remained hidden until now because previous studies have observed waves that are typically confined within an hour of the time of large earthquakes. We were able to achieve much better volumetric coverage because we were studying waves that bounced off for many hours after large earthquakes, he added. The scientists compared seismic data collected by detectors near the poles with those near the equator. The waves detected closer to the poles moved faster than those near the equator. They then fed the data to computer simulations to determine what conditions could be causing the results. The models showed that there must be a torus in the outer core around the equator, where the waves move more slowly. The bottom, or bottom, of the liquid outer core is warmer than the top. This temperature difference causes the liquid metal to move like boiling water in a pot. This process is called thermal convection. The constant movement should mean that all the material in the outer core is fairly well mixed and uniform. But if the outer core is made up of the same material everywhere, then seismic waves should travel at about the same speed. So why do the waves slow down in the discovered region? According to the researchers, this region must contain a much higher concentration of light elements. They can be released from the Earth's solid inner core into the liquid outer core, where their buoyancy causes more convection. 
Scientists believe that understanding the composition of the Earth's outer core, including light chemical elements, is fundamental to fully understanding the magnetic field. Our findings are interesting because the low velocity in the liquid core means that we have a high concentration of light chemical elements in these regions, which has caused the seismic waves to slow down, said Professor T. K. Lai. The magnetic field is a fundamental ingredient that we need for life to survive on the surface of our planet. The dynamics of the Earth's magnetic field is an area of great interest to the scientific community, so our results could promote more research into the magnetic field on both Earth and other planets," he added. Marine microbes are a promising source of new antibiotics. In the depths of the Arctic Ocean, researchers have discovered microbes that could become a source of a new generation of antibiotics. They have isolated two substances from them that can stop the growth of harmful bacteria. Antibiotics are the basis of modern medicine. Without them, we would be constantly exposed to dangerous infections. However, we are facing a global antibiotic crisis, which is antibiotic resistance. This is a serious problem. Harmful microorganisms are becoming resistant to common treatments, and their evolution is outpacing the development of new antibiotics. That is why scientists are constantly looking for new compounds that could help fight drug-resistant bacteria. This search led them to the Arctic Ocean. In its depths, they found microbes that produce compounds that may be useful in modern medicine. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Frontiers in Microbiology. About 70% of all antibiotics today come from soil-dwelling actinomycetes. This is a diverse group of bacteria. Due to the growing antibiotic resistance, scientists are constantly looking for new strains of actinomycetes, turning their attention to previously neglected and extreme environments such as insect digestive tracts, caves and the deep sea. Marine microbes are believed to produce a more diverse range of chemical compounds than their terrestrial counterparts. This is due to selective pressure created by extreme fluctuations in pressure, temperature, salt concentration and light levels that occur in marine environments. Researchers have focused on finding compounds that do not kill pathogens or affect their development, but reduce their virulence, or their ability to cause disease. This is an important strategy for reducing antibiotic resistance. If a substance kills or inhibits the growth of bacteria, evolution will eventually find individuals that are less affected by the substance and resistance will develop. But it is difficult for bacteria to develop resistance to a substance that reduces virulence. We have discovered a compound that inhibits the virulence of enteropathogenic E. coli EPEC, without affecting its growth, and a second compound that inhibits its growth. Both in actinomycetes from the Arctic Ocean, says Dr. Pavi Tamela from the University of Helsinki in Finland. The scientists targeted a strain of EPEC that causes severe and sometimes fatal diarrhea in children under 5, especially in developing countries. EPEC causes disease by attaching itself to cells in the human intestine. After this, EPEC injects so-called virulence factors into the host cell to take control of its molecular machinery, ultimately killing it. The two compounds were extracted from actinomycetes living inside invertebrates found in the waters of the Arctic Ocean. The first was found in an unknown strain of bacteria from the genus Cacuria. In tests, it inhibited the growth of the bacteria. It is not an ideal substance, but scientists cannot complain, especially in the face of the drug crisis. The second comes from an unknown strain of bacteria in the Rhodococcus genus, and tests showed it had the properties the researchers were looking for. 
The compound stopped E. coli from attaching to the host's gut lining. It also inhibited the binding between the bacteria and the tear receptor, a key step in the disease-causing process. Both compounds will be studied further to fully understand them and possibly develop them into something that could one day become a common drug. We've only done in vitro studies so far, so we're still a long way from saying whether these compounds have any clinical relevance, Tamela said. The next steps are to optimize the culture conditions for producing the compounds and isolate sufficient quantities to elucidate their respective structures and further investigate their bioactivity, Tamela emphasized. Ancient Astronomical Observatory Discovered in Egypt The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities has announced the discovery of an astronomical observatory in the ancient city of Budo. Archaeologists indicate that the huge mud brick building was built in the 6th century BCE. Numerous artifacts and a large sundial were found at the site. Egyptian archaeologists discovered the ruins of the observatory three years ago during excavations at an archaeological site in the ancient city of Buto, located less than 100 kilometers east of Alexandria. They determined that the observatory was built in the 6th century BCE. Scholars say that these are the first and largest structures of this type discovered and that they represent advanced knowledge of astronomy and its deep connection with the spiritual and ritual practices of the Egyptians. The observatory building is built of mud brick. It is huge. It is L-shaped and has an area of about 850 square meters. Its entrance faces east and is topped by a traditional gate called a pylon. It led to a place from which it was possible to observe the sky, and the observers were priests who tracked the movement of the sun and stars. Moreover, the building has a preserved bas-relief depicting an astronomer-priest facing the rising Sunday. According to Egyptian researchers, over 2,500 years ago this building was the largest astronomical observatory in Egypt. Today, it is part of the complex known as the Temple of the Pharaohs in Buto. The Egyptians were among the most talented astronomers in ancient times, and their legacy echoes to this day. It was in ancient Egypt that the 365-day calendar and 24-hour day were born. The ancient Egyptians knew the night sky and had their own constellations. In the ruins of the observatory, archaeologists found artifacts and tools related to the study of the sky. Everything we found exceeded our expectations, said Hassam Gonam, head of the archaeological mission. The researcher added that initially he and his team thought they had stumbled upon a temple, but as the excavations progressed, Artifacts and carved symbols were discovered that referred to time and astronomy, which convinced them of the nature of the building they were investigating. A large sundial designed by the ancient Egyptians to track time is worthy of special attention. These clocks use the movement of shadows as the sun moves across the sky to track time. The discovered clock consists of large, nearly 5 meter long limestone slabs on which 5 flat blocks are placed, 3 vertically and 2 horizontally. Time has left its mark, but the researchers believe that these blocks were once carved with lines that could be used to track the tilt of the shadow cast on the blocks as the sun moved. A large slab with two round stone blocks, one to the north and one to the west, was found in one of the rooms. According to archaeologists, this device was also used to track the tilt of the Sunday. The entire observatory building had many rooms. Some of them were most likely intended as warehouses where instruments for observing the sky were stored. In one of the rooms, the walls were covered with frescoes depicting a ritual boat and images of Horus and the symbol of the Eye of Horus, associated not only with the cosmos, but also with the god Horus and the goddess Uajet, the most important deities in Budo. 
Remains of an observation tower were also found. In the middle of the hall with frescoes, a stone platform was found decorated with inscriptions and representations of astronomical scenes of sunrise and sunset in the three seasons observed in ancient Egypt. Among the artifacts found are bronze and granite statues of Osiris, a terracotta figure of the god Bess, measuring tools, a faience necklace, a faience figure of the god Te, faience religious symbols, ceramic artifacts, amphora lids, and offering tables. An ancient Egyptian time measuring device known as a Merkath was also found. Astronomy was extremely important to the ancient Egyptians. They used their complex calendar to mark the passage of time and set dates for religious and political rituals, such as festivals and coronations. It was also important for navigation and tracking the annual flooding of the Nile, which was important for agriculture. Mosquitoes use infrared light to hunt humans. Californian scientists have discovered that mosquitoes use infrared light to locate hosts, among other things. The discovery could lead to improved mosquito control methods and help reduce the transmission of diseases such as dengue and malaria. Mosquitoes can be a real pain in the neck. An itchy rash may be a temporary nuisance, but in some parts of the world, a mosquito bite can have serious, even fatal, consequences. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is responsible for the spread of many dangerous diseases, including dengue and yellow fever. The Anopheles gambii mosquito, in turn, spreads the parasite that causes malaria. The World Health Organization estimates that malaria alone causes more than 400,000 deaths a year. This is in addition to the deaths caused by other serious mosquito-borne diseases. For this reason, these insects have been called the deadliest animals on the planet. Mosquitoes are insects that are extremely well adapted to the conditions in which they live. They can track their prey from a great distance. Male mosquitoes feed on flower nectar and plant juices. Only female mosquitoes, which need vertebrate blood to reproduce, bite us. Female mosquitoes give birth only once in their lives. After about six weeks, eggs laid in water hatch into larvae, which go through a pupal stage for several days before becoming adults. Males live for only two to three months and are unable to survive the winter. Mosquitoes locate us in several ways. It is believed that they are partly guided by the carbon dioxide we exhale and the smell of sweat. In a 2022 study, scientists found that mosquitoes also rely on vision and, after detecting the characteristic gas we exhale, fly towards certain colors, ignoring others. Body temperature, which is higher than the surroundings, is also important. In a recent study, researchers at the University of California, Santa Barbara, found that mosquitoes use infrared radiation to help them detect body heat from farther away than previously thought. The results and a description of the study were published in the journal Nature. Scientists have long known that the insects sense the heat of their prey, which travels to them via air currents. But this only works at very close range. In the 1950s, they tried to find out whether Aedes aegypti, the mosquito that carries the viruses that cause dengue, zika, and other diseases, relied on some kind of infrared detector, or way of detecting heat. However, those studies yielded no results at the time. But mosquitoes don't rely solely on the body heat of their prey. They integrate a variety of environmental cues to locate their hosts. These include CO2 from exhaled air, odors, sight, heat from our skin and moisture from our bodies. But each of these signals has its limitations, explained Avinash Shandal, a CO author of the study. 
Craig Montell of the University of California, Santa Barbara, and his colleagues wondered whether infrared radiation, combined with human odor and the carbon dioxide we exhale, could make us a target for mosquitoes. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is exceptionally talented at finding human hosts, said Nicholas de Bobia from Montel's group, a CEO author of the paper. This work sheds new light on how they do it, he added. From a distance of about 10 centimeters, the insects can detect heat rising from our skin. They can also directly sense the temperature of our skin after landing. These two methods correspond to two types of heat transfer, convection, or the transfer of heat through a medium such as air, and conduction, or the transfer of heat through direct contact. However, heat energy can also travel longer distances when it is converted into electromagnetic waves in the infrared range. For their study, the scientists placed female mosquitoes in a mesh cage. Then they placed two 10x10 cm thermoelectric plates next to each other in front of the cage and made sure that there was no heat transfer to the cage via air currents. One plate emitted infrared radiation typical of the human body, the other did not. In the next step, they measured the mosquito's activity in searching for a host. When infrared radiation was the only stimulus the female mosquitoes received, they did not actively seek out prey or fly toward it. But when the researchers introduced other stimuli into the cages human odors and CO2 at the same concentration as we exhale the presence of infrared radiation significantly increased the insect's activity. The researchers determined that the female mosquitoes could locate us using infrared from a distance of about 70 centimeters. What struck me most about this work was how strong of a signal infrared was. Once all the parameters were right, the results were very clear, Devobia said. No single signal stimulates host-seeking activity. It's only in the context of other signals, such as elevated CO2 and human odor, that infrared makes a difference, Montel said. The researchers also found where their infrared detector is located. The tips of the mosquito's antennae have heat-sensing neurons. When these tips were removed, the female mosquitoes lost their ability to detect infrared light. It turned out that the tips of their antennae contain a temperature-sensitive protein called TRPA1. Insects without a functional gene that codes for this protein were unable to detect infrared light.